Have you ever had a huge success, went out to celebrate, and maybe partied too hard, too much drinking, spiked guacamole, hot sex with someone you probably shouldn't have but aren't going to regret? Then you would fit right in with Ava Winter's Special Forces team. Except after they celebrated, they learned the nuclear bomb they thought they deactivated was a fake, and the real one is still out there ready to blow. Oops. Welcome all to an obliterated watch party. It's a new Netflix show that goes hard on the action comedy genre, with an especially hard R rating. And it's not just violence and sexually provocative nudity, though there's plenty of that. There's also a lot of the disturbing and gross type of nudity as well. But let's leave the tits, ass, and penises for later. The show is definitely a mix of original and familiar territory, the setup being the best. The team is drunk, high, and whatever else. They can barely keep themselves together and they gotta find a nuclear bomb. Not fun. It's a pure comedy setup and that's definitely where it hits the hardest. I believe at their hearts, the creators John, Josh, and Hayden are comedy writers. It's what they're good at. The best moments are what come as a surprise and often involve a camel. Conversely, the action is often intense and strong, if not especially original. That's probably where the show can drag for some people. Some long drawn out fight scenes where you're kind of losing track of what's happening. It's not bad, but it's not something you've never seen before. The best fights are those with the strong character motivation underneath. Trunk in the kitchen during the finale and the raid on the compound to rescue Trunk. The more character motivation was involved, the better the fight. As far as the characters go, Maya is probably the best example of where the show is strongest, but also where it falls short. She was my favorite character out of the gate with her lusting after Chad while working on the computers and the awkward assertions. The whipped cream bikini and resulting hatred towards Ava really drove her character for the first two thirds of the show. However, she is the first character whose story arc is resolved. After the hospital, she got over Chad and was kind of far less interesting. She just then became another tech chick, sitting behind a bunch of computers with infinite knowledge to help the team on whatever the plot requires. You've seen this on other shows and it really isn't original. Didn't Criminal Minds have a smart tech chick sitting in front of computers who can figure out whatever the plot requires? It's kind of everywhere these days. It's too bland. We need something else to keep her interesting. Paul is my personal favorite for the whole season. As someone who doesn't drink much or do drugs, I kind of relate to him in his I'm still sober, what's wrong with the rest of you attitude. His interactions with the gremlin is really where the show is strongest. In fact, the gremlin itself is the best freaking thing in the entire series. After episode two, I spent about 15 minutes in my chair just laughing and reminiscing of the surprise of what just happened. I loved it. I still think back of it and just laugh and enjoy myself. Seriously, it's amazing. When Haggerty started talking to the Gremlin in the finale, it was the perfect combination. If this show is remembered for anything, it should be Paul and that Gremlin. It's freaking good. His trippy attack in Las Vegas to rescue his daughter that was all an illusion is about the best way you can do such a storyline. He also has the most personal connection to why they need to defuse the bomb. I think he's the best character. Now, Shelly Hennig may be a former beauty queen. It shows. But Ava is perhaps the flattest character? Her tension with Maya is more interesting from Maya's side, and her banter with Chad is often a little more harsh than fun. She's a tough leader, you can see, but why does she need to tell us? I don't know. She feels like she's filling a predefined role as the tough female leader who makes the right call and can even trip Trunk with a bit of ingenuity. She's an example of this show having the perfect cookie cutter piece. The problem being, she may be perfect, but she's still just a cookie cutter character. Not completely original. The first episode gives a little backstory where she was engaged and apparently her fiance died, but that's mostly dropped from the story to the point I even forgot about it. Haggerty is in many ways the most fun of all of them. A crazy eccentric bomb tech. I'm not sure it's realistic, but I loved his need for Michael Bublé, and when Yanni shows up to sing at the end, it makes you think maybe, just maybe, their marriage will work out. It's a happy ending for them. He also has the best entrance, coming in on Joey the Camel at the very end. Though the biggest problem with Haggerty is he's out cold for half the show. While it does make for some interesting predicaments, like moving him through the desert, 
He's often a dead weight and kind of feels like it. There's a straightforward writing reason for this. The bomb tech doesn't have much to do when there's no bomb to disarm. I see that, but it feels like a lot is lost. For what it's worth, the story does work as he wakes up on a new boat in new pants and just goes about his day, because for him, waking up on a boat in different clothes is pretty normal. So he's one of the best characters for the part of the show he's actually conscious. Chad McKnight is perhaps the most Chad Alpha name, and Nick Zano definitely matches. He's a decent character who falls a little into the same slot as Ava. He's the embodiment of every action hero, specifically Stallone. The problem is he's often an emasculated leader, so you don't find yourself rooting for him the way you do Rambo or any of the Schwarzenegger heroes. He's being shown up by Ava and always part of a team. I do like his backstory, his dad apparently died, and he's worried about his mom as she's worried about him. But that doesn't raise him to the next level. The thing about action stars is they're supposed to be larger than life, and they're the person you dream to be like. You want to be him. That's a big part of the success of the superhero genre. The problem with Chad is, he was never someone I dreamed of being or becoming. He has his moments for sure, but then sometimes they're cut short by the other characters, like here at the beginning. They don't elevate him over the top. Is there any moment with Chad where you would just reimagine the scene with yourself in his role? I don't find that. And then there's Lana, or Anastasia. After a full season, I find I still have a lot of questions about her. In full context, she's a super intelligent Russian bent on revenge with her brother. She leads and commands everyone without a flinch. But at the same time, she clearly played the part of a bembo online influencer skank who sleeps her way into money to perfection. This apparently was a ready-made alias as she had an ID ready to go with the fake name and everything. But then she mentions her TikTok and such several times. What if the characters or anyone decided to actually look her up? That's the natural thing to do, right? As an online detective myself, I am authorized to say that. Would they find anything? Does she have a TikTok? Does the persona Lana actually exist on TikTok? You're led to think the answer is no, she was making it up. But then it also means her cover story could have been disproven in an instant. I mean, it is sort of fun to think that no one even thought of going on TikTok to check on her, but that's beside the point. Ultimately, she is actually a super Russian terrorist out for revenge, who just happens to be a bimbo girl on the side. I do think it leaves future potential for her character, because I would like to see it all come together even more. I think sniping sniper Angela Gomez is perhaps the least likable of the team. That's not to say she's a bad character, just the least likable. Out of all of them, she's the one I think I would probably least want to hang out with. She's rough on the edges and tends to think of herself. I mean, it's one thing to hit on the bride at a bachelorette party. Lo, okay, she really crossed the line though when she picked a big fight with the bridesmaids later on. When you realize the bridesmaids were just the bride's best friends and maybe sisters, you can understand their motivation. They're sticking up for their friend, their sister. Her wedding just got ruined. That's what friends do. But fucking throwing down and fighting and beating the shit out of them isn't the best approach. Now, she does complete her arc by helping Kreese, I mean Billy, get his groove back. She made him more interesting and dangerous. So yes, it's resolved with a happy ending. But still, like I said, I don't think I would be friends with her if I knew her in real life. And finally, we have Trunk, the loyal sidekick and massive muscle of the team. He plays the part well, and in many respects, I think he's more fun character to watch than Chad. Who can relate to feeling so hungry and never being able to grab some food? There's also a morality lesson in his failure to eat. Every time he has a chance, he orders way too much. The exercised order slows everything down, and since it takes too long to make, he ends up not eating anything. So don't be greedy or gluttonous. This may seem strange, but I'm so used to the creators pulling a fast one on the audience and constant fakeouts, I thought the big joke was going to be Trunk actually isn't gay. I really thought he had some STD that was flaring up and he was just hiding in the shower so some doctor could check it out. Seriously, the idea of Chad thinking he's gay when he's actually not gay was a sort of fun concept to me. Obviously, that was dead wrong, and frankly, I found his story less interesting when I realized, no, he's really just gay. It's that straightforward. Like, was this supposed to be drama? I feel like maybe this storyline would have carried more weight back in 2006 
But today there's so many gay characters everywhere, I feel like I've seen this all before. I don't know what they could have done with the character, but this part of them feels kind of unoriginal. There's also another important topic with Trunk I want to talk about. I don't talk about representation much, it's just not my thing. But Trunk really connected with me in a way no other character has before, on TV or in movies. You see, in the gruesome torture scene, it is first revealed that Trunk is so named because he has a very large penis, massive in size. Like never before did a wave of understanding rush over me. Yes, I get it now. This is what people are always talking about when they say representation. The power of having a character on screen who kind of looks like me. I never felt this way before. To finally be seen. To feel like, hey, I'm not weird or abnormal. There, right there on the screen, there's someone who's just like me. It's indescribable, it means so much. Finally, I can feel kinda normal. I wanna personally thank creators, John Hurwitz, Hayden Schlossberg, Josh Heald, as well as Terrence Terrell for recognizing the importance of this representation and putting a character on screen that I, personally, can identify with. It's nice to feel normal, to feel seen. It's a moment I will never forget. Thank you. <sighs> Moving away from the main cast, I feel like one of the problems with the show is the villains or bad guys, they're essentially forgettable and interchangeable. Certainly on my first watch, I couldn't tell them apart. And frankly, the fact that you can't really tell them apart doesn't alter the story a whole lot. Yeah, the raid on the compound where one set of bad guys are working against another set of bad guys isn't the clearest, but it's not that big a deal. The crypto terrorists didn't make much sense for whatever it's worth, but we'll ignore that. The finale is a little odd the way everyone is casually hanging out, knowing a nuke is going to go off, which the show does try to address but to me felt all a little questionable. They certainly left plenty of room for subsequent seasons, as this scene is basically an introduction to the bad guys in waiting. I think the show's creators are big fans of shock humor, and basically shock value. This is how we got both the dick torture scene, as well as plenty other penises and butts and everything else. Honestly, I think this mostly falls flat. We're living in a post-shock value world, which makes everything hit a little less hard. It's another example of something that probably would have been way more effective back in 2006. Today it's like, yeah, okay, you're showing his ass covered in shit. How daring of you. By the way, that's not something that's going to make me want to watch the show again and again. As I said, I prefer the more creative and original approaches. That's the stuff like Haggerty waking up and finding a girl he wants to marry. And of course, Paul's gremlin. The gremlin is truly great. It's a little odd thinking of a multi-military branch special unit operating within the country in a major city like Las Vegas. Normally that would be law enforcement, the FBI, or other federal agencies. However, by making most of the characters as part of the military, they're making the show a little less political. Obliterated is definitely a patriotic, pro-America show. The characters do what they do not because they needed a job, but they genuinely want to be in that position. They want to serve, they want to protect America. There's a dearth of shows that take this approach these days, and it's refreshing to take this in. While I'm not sure the deeper meaning holds up to scrutiny, maybe you don't always have to scrutinize so deep, at least not in the initial review. <laughs> Obliterated isn't perfect, but it's still light years beyond anything else that's out there. I'm happy with what there is and definitely looking out for more. Have some drinks and drugs and I'll see you at the next watch party.